We're looking at a few topics dealing with transfer functions, differential equations, and block diagrams. The topic of this course is controller design, but to design a controller we have to be able to model the system. So the system that we're modeling, it helps in making a mathematical model to first come up with a schematic, and then we can develop a mathematical model. Oftentimes we need to reduce the model to get some level of complexity that we can deal with. Once we have the mathematical model, then we can analyze its performance, design a compensator, and test the effectiveness and repeat. In general, we have, for this topic, a linear differential equation describing a relationship between an input, which we'll call R, and an output, which we're calling C. So here is our general form of this linear differential equation. C has an nth derivative and R has an nth derivative. One thing that's nice about using transfer functions is that they simplify the representation of the system. And we have input in the system and the output as distinct parts. In this way we can really see the characteristics of the system. And you're familiar with the Laplace transform. We use that to go from a differential equation in the unknown function of time to an algebraic equation where we have this notation, capital F of S is the Laplace transform of lowercase f of t. Advantages of using the Laplace transform include that it allows us to use a transfer function. So we have the input output and the system represented as separate entities. And that makes the system characteristics clear to see and algebraic equations are generally easier to solve than differential equations. So we can solve for the system response more easily using the Laplace transform. Here's the definition of the Laplace transform. <coughs> we take this integral, this complex integral, and, off and then the inverse Laplace transform is defined as follows. U of t is the unit step function. So for all time less than zero, this function is 0, and for time greater than 0, it's 1. Usually, instead of performing this integration, we just use a transform table. Here's an example. This column has, the, has some functions in the time domain, and here are the Laplace transforms of those functions. The second table has theorems that allow us to take the Laplace transform of more types of functions. So for example, we want to find the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus 3 squared. Now, a function that looks like this is not in our transform table. We have 1 over s plus a, but here we have squared. So what we want to do is go from this function of s to a function of t. But this, so there's no function that looks like this in our Laplace transform table, but we can use the frequency shift theorem. So if we had 1 over s squared, but then we shifted it by a, then that would look like this function. So s plus 3 squared looks like this. And this table tells us that this is the Laplace transform of a function e to the negative a t times f of t. So what we want to do here is find c of t. And that's equal to the inverse Laplace transform of c of s. So I've written c of s here. And this is equal to e to the negative 3 times t. So in our case, a was 3 times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared. And that is, now we can look at the table again. 1 over s squared, inverse Laplace transform is t times unit step function. And oftentimes I'll just omit the unit step function. We'll know that this is valid for times greater than or equal to zero. So this is valid for time greater than or equal to zero. So here is the inverse Laplace transform of this function. <coughs> A tool that we'll use whenever we're finding these inverse Laplace transforms is partial fraction expansion and it allows us to convert a complicated function into a sum of simpler functions and those simpler functions we can then find in the Laplace transform table.
we're going to look in this slide at components having real roots and the portion of this fraction corresponding to the factor s minus a of multiplicity n is the sum a1 over s minus a plus a2 over s minus a squared all the way up to a n over s minus a to the n and these values for a are constants that we need to determine so for example we want to solve the this initial value problem we have the second derivative of x minus the derivative of x minus 6 times x is equal to 0. That's our differential equation. And then we have initial conditions x at time 0 is equal to 2, and the derivative of x at time 0 is equal to 1, negative 1. We're going to use the Laplace transform to solve this problem. So first we want to take the Laplace transform of this differential equation, and we're going to begin with the second derivative of x. So we can go to our Laplace transform table. And we have a rule for the derivative of, excuse me, the Laplace transform of derivatives. So here we have Laplace transform of second derivative, and that's s squared f of s minus s times f at time 0 minus f, time f prime at time 0. So our function was x double dot minus x dot. minus 6x equals 0. And we want to find the Laplace transform of x. So x of s So we have s squared times x of s. And then going back to the theorem for the derivative minus s times f at time 0. And so minus 2s minus plus 1. So those were the initial conditions. We are subtracting those. So that came from this rule. And that gave us a Laplace transform of the second derivative. And now we have Laplace transform of the first derivative. And that's s times x of s minus, and then we can go back to the table here, minus f at time 0. And f at time 0 is 2. So minus 2. And then the Laplace transform of 6x is just minus 6 times x of s. And all this is equal to 0. So now we'll group all the x of s terms. So we have s squared minus s minus 6 times x of s minus 2s plus 1 plus 2 is equal to 0. Now we're going to solve for x of s. And that gives us 2s plus 3, where s squared minus s minus 6. So we finally got to the part where we're going to use partial fraction expansion. We want to find x of t, so we want to take the inverse Laplace transform of this function. But there's no function like this in the table, so we're going to say that this is equal to 2s plus 3. We want to find the roots of the denominator. And so we have s minus 3, s plus 2. And partial fraction expansion now tells us this is equal to a over s minus 3 plus b over s plus 2. And we want to find these coefficients. And then we can use the Laplace transform table. So to find a, <coughs> We're going to multiply this fraction by s minus 3 and then evaluate it at s equals 3. So a is equal to 2s plus 3 divided by s minus 3 times s plus 2 multiplied by s minus 3. And all that evaluated at s equals 3. 
And so we end up with 2 times 3 plus 3 divided by 3 plus 2. So we have 9 fifths. And for B, similar, we have 2s plus 3. We're going to multiply this by s plus 2. So we're left with s minus 3 in the denominator. And we're going to evaluate that at s equals negative 2. So we end up with negative 6 plus 3 divided by negative 5. So we have 3 fifths. Now x of t is the inverse Laplace transform of x of s. And we found a simpler form for x of s. So that was 1 fifth times 9 over s minus 3 plus 3 over s plus 2. Both of these functions have the same form. We have a constant divided by s plus a constant. And so we can use this item on the Laplace transform table constant over s plus a constant and that's just equal to e to the negative a t. So back to our example <coughs> what we have here is one fifth times nine times e to the three t plus three times e to the negative two t and then all that's multiplied by the unit step function. So here a was negative 3, so we had e to the negative at, and here a is 2, e to the negative at. And now we have the time response of this system, given the initial conditions that we started with. That was for real roots, and partial fraction expansion can also be used when you have complex roots <coughs> in the denominator of r. So those factors can be expressed as s minus a squared plus b squared. And again, we can have multiple roots at the same place. And in that case, we'll have multiple quotients with the same root, except with raised to different powers. So the difference here, whenever we have complex roots, the numerator is going to have a1 times s plus b1, or really I should say ai times s plus bi, because we can have up to n pairs of these. And let's look at an example where we have this differential equation. Second derivative of x plus 4 times x is equal to sine of 3t. So we have this forcing function sine of 3t. And in this case it's going to be a little bit simpler because we have zero initial conditions. So when we take the Laplace transform we don't have to deal with those. Now our example again x of t is x double dot plus 4x and that was equal to sine of 3t. And from the Laplace transform table I copied this. The Laplace transform of sine times of sine of omega t is equal to omega over s squared plus omega squared. So the Laplace transform of all this we have s squared x of s plus 4 times x of s. That was the Laplace transform of the left hand side. And if we want to take the Laplace transform of the right hand side, we will use this item from the Laplace transform table. Here omega is 3, so this is equal to 3 over s squared plus 9. And let me factor out the x of s on the left hand side. So that's equal to s squared plus 4 times x of s. And now in order to solve for the time response, we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform to solve for x of t. So we want to get x of s all on one side. I don't know what's going wrong with the autofocus here. Hopefully this will get worked out soon. Let me try to lock it again. All right, so x of s is s squared plus 4, s squared plus 9 in the denominator, and 3 in the numerator. And here we can use partial fraction expansion to get a simpler version of this. So we've got 
roots um, plus or minus i2 and plus or minus i3. So this looks like a1s plus b1 over s squared plus 4 plus a2s plus b2 times s squared plus 9. And the way we'll find these coefficients, we're not going to use the same shortcut that we did whenever we had real roots. So we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator here. And that leaves us with 3 is equal to a1s plus b1 times s squared plus 9 plus a2s plus b2 times s squared plus 4. And go ahead and distribute all these. And we, let me see if I can skip a little step here. I went ahead and multiplied these out and then grouped them according to the coefficients for the different s terms. So s cubed, we had a1 plus s to a, a2, so we had a1, s cubed, a2, s cubed, etc. s squared, we had this. The s terms were given here, and then the, the s to the zero terms um, were shown here, so they're constant terms. And now we can just solve um, by terms. So s cubed on the left hand side we have zero, so that gives us that a1 is equal to negative a2. And coming over here to the s terms, on the left hand side we have zero multiplying s. So this is equal to zero. So we had 9a1, a1 is negative a2, so negative 9a2 plus 4a2 is equal to zero. So that gives us that a2 is zero and a1 is zero. Now we can do the same thing with the b's. So the s squared terms on the left hand side are zero, so b1 is equal to negative b2. And now this, we have constant terms, is equal to three. So 9b1, that's negative 9b2, negative 9b2 plus 4b2 is equal to three. Um, so that gives us that b2 is negative three-fifths, which gives us that b1 is three-fifths. Okay. So now substituting those terms in up here, we have x of s after partial fraction expansion is three-fifths times one over s squared plus four minus one over s squared plus nine. But these don't look exactly like anything in the Laplace transform table. They're pretty close to this for the Laplace transform of sine. We just need to multiply it by a different term so we can have omega in the numerator. And so all this is equal to 3 fifths mm, times 1 half 2 over s squared plus 4 minus 1 third times 3 over s squared plus 9. And now this looks like what we have in the tra Laplace transform table. So we get that x of t is 3 fifths times 1 half sine of 2t minus 1 third sine of 3t. And all that's multiplied by the unit step function.